Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudok Sleuth and today we're going to be playing Lines Between Lines. Now when you face a title such as this one, uh, no wonder I'm thinking about hidden messages or codes between lines. So you've got Sleuth here reading some kind of book with coded messages in between and it looks like gobbledygook or like hieroglyphics for all as far as I'm concerned. But somehow you can see Sleuth is absolutely concentrating very, very hard, trying to figure out what it all means. Concentrating so hard that he's got frown lines appearing, his hair is looking a bit unkempt, and there's facial hair growing. Um, not that I'm trying to replicate the look by any chance. Uh, what else do I want to mention about today's puzzle before we get stuck into it? So it's got 96% rating, um, one of the highest that we featured, I think, in the month of July. And it looks like a lot of fun, just looking at the puzzle. If you haven't guessed it already, it is very much focused about between lines, hence lines between lines. Uh, but rather than confuse you with my description, let's just bring up the grid and today's puzzle, walk you through the rule sets, and we'll crack on with a solve. I was going to kind of tell a bit of an anecdote about cryptography and, you know, using it when I was a kid, etc. But let's just move on. Right. Lines Between Lines by Noon. Lovely name. Rules-wise, and you can see, I think, the reference very much to the title. Here's an in-between line. Here is a what will probably be a German whisper line, a thermometer in between the between lines. So very aptly named puzzle. Rules-wise, we've got standard Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Then we have the thermometer. So digits increase from the bulb of the thermometer. The, thermo the thermometer is colored to distinguish it from the between line. So I think it doesn't actually mention the color of it, but the fact that this is the only one that has a bulb tells me that this is the thermometer. And of course the digits, sorry, the thermometer's digits have to increase from the bulb end. So just like in real physical thermometers, I'll remove the letters, uh, essentially, if this cell is 2, the next one up would have to be 3, 4 or higher. Let's assume it's a 4. The next one up doesn't have to be in the same steps. So just because that this is a 2 and this is a 4, you can barely see this. I'm just going to mess around with the colors. Not that I'm expecting this to actually be any better, by the way, because I'm pretty sure, yeah, that doesn't do anything. Um, let's try monochrome theme. That's done nothing as well. Now, I, I do seem to remember there is a high contrast option in here. How about if I do this? That's not readable. Sorry about this. I think we're going to have to make the best of it somehow. But I really could have sworn there was like a high contrast theme that for some reason I just can't seem to find right now. I'm going to move on unless it catches my attention quickly now. So under visual. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Sorry about this. So I am going to use larger letters just to make it a bit more readable. I think the two is barely passable now and the four. So along the thermometer, you know, this could actually be a five. That would be fine. You know, two, a step of two, a step of one. It's not really a problem. It doesn't have to be consistent. What I cannot do is go down on the thermometer. So two, four, five, three. That is lower than the five. That doesn't work. That's broken the cell and broken the puzzle. Right. So that's the thermometer. Next, we have the German whisper lines. Adjacent digits on the green line have a difference of five. So that does confirm that this cell here is a, on a German whisper line, and therefore this has to be the thermometer. So if this cell here is a 2, actually that's a bad example. If this cell here is a 2, this these two cells, which are the neighbors, would have to be 7, 8, or 9 to be 5 or more away. Uh, and if this cell is a 2, sorry, if this cell is a 7, 8, or 9, let's assume it's an 8, this would have to be 1, 2, or 3, clearly not the 2 because it's repeating in the same box. And you see the regular pattern that German whispers uh, all have, which is high digits, six, seven, eight, nine, low digits, one, two, three, four, and you oscillate between the two polarities regularly. 
Uh, I was going to say last but not least, but that's not true. We've got three more variants today. The between lines, which is what the puzzle is all about. So uh, digits on a gray line are numerically between the digits at its circled endpoints. So if this cell here is a 1 and this here is, a, I don't know, a, an 8, essentially all of the cells between these two circles, and obviously for other between lines it would be between the circles, their own circles, have to be between the digits 1 and 8. Not inclusive, mind you. So essentially off these lines would be the digits 1, 8 and 9 somewhere hidden in all of these four cells so that they do not repeat on here. I picked the 9 because it's clearly not between 1 and 8, and 1 and 8 is not included. Right, what else do we have? X's and V's, digits in any two cells joined by an X sum up to 10. So if this cell here is a 2, this would have to be an 8 to make sure that these two cells add up to 10. Last but not least, digits on the negative diagonal. So this little killer clue, which is up there. And this is the negative diagonal. These nine cells going downwards as such. They must sum up to 44. So that's all the rules we have for today. As always, if you feel like helping Sleuth crack this particular uh, cryptographic puzzle, find the hidden lines between the lines. Link will be in the description down below for you to play as usual. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. Is that recording? I'm sorry, I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that is recording. Fine. Right. So boxes three and boxes seven look immensely interesting. If you look at just the sheer number of cells that are on the between lines, that is everything except two digits. And the answer is it's not one and nine. Uh, the reason is, of course, that these two cells are the one and nine, and therefore I can't have the digits one and nine on the in-between lines. They can never be on an in-between lines, full stop. And the fact that I have two cells that are not on between line in box seven, they're in here, and therefore the two and eight, which are the other extreme digits now that the one and nine are removed, are on the line, and therefore this has to be one and nine. And yeah, same logic up here. This is one nine. This is one nine. And we can keep it going. Right, when you come to think about German whisper lines, if I put a four in here, the next digit will have to be a nine. If I put a six in here, the next digit would have to be a one. They're the only digits that are five or more away from four and five or more away from six, but they're not available anymore in the boxes. So the four and the six cannot be on the German whisper line. One thing I didn't mention in the introduction about the rule sets is five can never be on a German whisper line. Otherwise the two neighboring digits would have to be 10 or zero, neither of which is allowed under normal Sudoku rules. So these three cells, and actually these three cells are all four, five, and six. Then we're left with 2, 8, and 3, 7. The 3 and the 7 are the more restrictive of the two. So essentially, it's something like 3 next to an 8, because 7 is too close. And then this would be the 7, and this would be the 2, because you know the 3 would be too close. So yeah, we end up essentially with 3, 7 on the outer edges, 2, 8 on the inner edges, because they're the ones that are seeing two cells. Same in here, same in there. Lovely. So far, I mean, it's a fantastic puzzle. No digits. So let's see if we can actually fix that at all. You see, we can't seem to repeat the same trick in box five. It's so much simpler. Forget that. Forget that. Row 9, row 1. Look at these X's. Now, the nature of X's is it's either a 4-6 pair to add up to 10. Uh, it is. I picked a bad example. Or it's 1-9, but it isn't, because that would break this cell. 2-8, it isn't. It'll break this cell. 3-7, which, again, I think you've already 
got it ahead of me. It isn't because we'll break this down. So this is four, six. Here is our first digit. Only took us three and a half minutes. Say only. And uh, we've got our first digits. And same logic in row one. There's a lot of symmetry about this puzzle, but I know it's not symmetrical because the negative diagonal is not 45, it's 44. And these are not the same. So that's the main thing that's breaking this. Plus, obviously, thermometers are not necessarily rotationally symmetrical, but the shape is. So it would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for these two. So this is what breaks the symmetry and essentially leaves the diagonal to be 44 rather than 45. Ooh, notice the four sixes are lining up. And therefore, the fours and sixes have to be here in column seven. Now, I think a four or six on here is too close. Because even if it's six and a one, absolutely maximizing this, this is one, two, three, four, five cells. I would only be able to place two, three, four, five. It's not enough. So this is definitely four, six. And yeah, same down this stretch. This is again four, six. And again, same challenges, whichever one I put, whichever it is, four and nine, six and one. Any attempt to basically maximize this, it doesn't have enough room left in here. Interesting. Interesting. Where else do we go from here, actually? That's a good question. Oh, yeah, this 10. Come on. Sleuth, it's this exact same logic. It's not one nine, it's not two eight, it's not three seven, it's four six. And what else are we left with? Essentially another one nine, another two eight, another three seven, fair enough. This is now no longer four six, nor is it one nine, it's two eight or three seven. Not sure yet which it is. Which is, I should say, not which it is. I'm just having a look at what's going on in box five. Everything seems to sort of rotate around it. We can see that the ones and nines are not are going to have to be in one of these four cells. But what else can we see? Oh, here is something. Here is something. Where is this cell? I'm going to start using some colors. Where is this purple cell in box five? Short answer is it's not in this column. Obviously, Sudoku. It's not on the in-between line. We've covered ones and nines can never be on the in-between line, nor this cell. And therefore, the purple one nine has to be in one of these two cells, making this not a purple one nine, it's an orange one nine. And I think we can use the exact same logic again to think where is the purple, sorry, orange one nine? Well, it's none of these cells. It's got to be one of these two Problem is, it can be on the thermometer, so it's not helping me. Oh, hang on. These two have to be opposite, don't they? Yeah, so this purple, I can't have 9 and 9 on here, and then somehow have 2, 3, 7, and 8 on the in-between lines, and 4, 6. So this has to be orange, this has to be purple. Now, could this allow me to place anything? Yes, it does. None of these cells now can be purple. Sudoku and the in-between lines, that's the purple one nine. Uh, probably similar logic with the orange one nine. Yep, that's the orange one nine. Can I color more, do you think? Yes, that's the just Sudoku. Come on, Sleuth, there you go. That's orange, 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 orange one nine, purple one nine. Just Sudoku again. Hmm. The purple one nine. Yeah, yeah, I can do a bit more. So the purple one nine, one of them is in here, eliminating all of these cells in column two. A second one is between these cells, eliminating all of these as options in column three. So there's a purple one nine in these two cells lining up with the one nine in here. So where is the purple one nine in row one? Well, it can't be this cell, can't be this cell, 
can only be in here. Looks like we're going to be able to get all of them potentially. No, we've got essentially an X-Wing. What about orange? Can we do something? We know that the uh, orange 1-9 can't be on this 10, otherwise it'll be joined with the purple 1-9. So this is orange 1-9. This is where the symmetry starts to break a bit. 1-9 in here, 1-9 in there. So there's an orange 1-9 there, forming again part of that X-Wing. And then same logic, yeah, there's another one in here. Okay. Okay. What else do I know? Thing is, so far it doesn't actually help me with all of these cells. Right, here is something. What are these cells? No, I think I can, my, my kind of, my instinct is to say they are two and eight because they can't be one nine. And therefore the in-between lines would be three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's forced. That's two, eight. Uh, hopefully that was a, I mean, it's not a great explanation. I kind of rushed it, but essentially we need to have one, two, three, four, five in-between digits. Now, with the two extremes, 1 and 9, gone, between, between 1 and 9 are 7 digits. However, neither of them could be at the ends. Yeah, they're gone, according to Sudoku. So the next two digits are 2 and 8, and they have exactly 5 in-between cells. And we can keep going, actually, with the two eights, because this 2 eight, well, it's not on the in-between line. It's not in this cell, according to Sudoku. It's up here, and it's in here. And I'm going to... Problem is, I don't know which is high and which is low. I want to color them. Green, yellow, is that even going to be visible? Yellow, green, yellow. Let's go with it. Why not? Green 28, you can see, well, it's none of these cells in box six, and it can't be this cell. That's the only one that's left. That's the green 28. Green 28, not blue 28. Similar logic probably with the yellow. Yeah. So that's all of them. That's the only one that's left. Uh, what was it? Yellow 28. How do I not know the polarity still? Is it going to, what's it going to come down to actually? Of course, sleuth, pay attention. The thermometer. So these are the ones. These are the nines. So it's this cell, does that matter? Uh, I don't need the colored one nines anymore, do I? No. So at least it gives me a color back. Nines now are in here, ones are in there, and similar logic in here. These are nines, these are ones. Lovely. Green to eight. No, I need to figure out what this is. Yeah, not too sure. Here is uh, some kind of obvious logic now. Where does the 4, 6, where does this 4, 6 go in column 8? And the answer is, well, it's none of these cells. It's not these two because there's a, a pair of 4, 6s in here. Oh, actually, hang on. This cell is the same as this one. Right. Uh, to avoid some silliness, which I very nearly did. I was about to add a 4-6 in here, which is bonkers, because I've already got two of them. 3-7 uh, and 5 in here. And the 3-7 is not this cell, that's the 5, that's another digit. That's 3-7. There is, in essence, 9 and 5, I'm going to say? Yes. That's five nine, and this is one with a yellow two eight. I don't know which one it is. Okay, can I do something similar in here? Yes, that can't be the three seven. That's the three seven. This is the five. Uh, therefore, this is the one five option. Yep, 
and then another 2-8, this time with a green 2-8. And then these digits are just known. They are 3-7 and then yellow 2-8. Okay. Yeah, not too sure. Not too sure. Clearly, I'm going to have to think a bit harder about this thermometer to make a bit of progress. I'm just trying to see if there's any way we can shortcut this, uh, this process. Let's think about this then. This is not an eight, and it, you know it's clearly not a nine. So the highest this can be is seven. The highest this can be is five. Sorry, not five, six, and five. Can it be a five? It's exactly five. I've colored everything else in pairs. So there's only one digit left. That's five. This is six, seven, and this is three, four doesn't help me with the ones that are on the between lines, by the way. Yeah, again, not sure. Huh. Coloring these was not a good use of colors. I'm going to need these back. Yeah, I am really not sure what's next. It'd be lovely if I can do something with this 10, but I just can't seem to. More logic. These two cells have to add up to 10. No, they don't. No, they don't. I know that they're not 4, 6, because it would break this cell. Right? It's, it's so much easier. Why am I making this so difficult? Where does 2, 8, the pair, go in column 5? And the answer is, at most, one of them goes here, and then the second one goes in there. And the second I put one of them in here, they both go in there. That's 2, 8. And then... One of the four sixes, this four six, is on here, in one of these two cells. And then this one is the loose three seven. Yeah, it's, it's now starting to make you really work hard for the solve. Yellow 2.8 is in here, the green 2.8 is in there, and it can't be in this cell because we've already got two of them, but it could be in either of these. And no negative constraints today, so it's not going to help me. So what do I have? I need another 2.8, another 3.7, double 2.8 in box 8. That's not a 2.8, that's a 2.8, that's a 3.7. Oh, 2.8, that's a 3.7. Hopefully similar logic going on in here. I say this cell... And therefore this cell, no. Yeah, this this breaks the symmetry very much now. Then we have, oh yeah, that's the green 2-8, obviously. So that's green, that's yellow, that's green. Um, is it green? You can barely tell again. That's green, that's yellow, just they have to be the same polarities around the German whisper line, every other cell. We know that. And therefore, this is a yellow 3-7. It's not helping me. I really would love to sort of crack into all of this, but I just don't seem to be able to. 3-7 is in here. Because this is a yellow 2-8. This yellow 3-7 gives me a green 3-7, another yellow 3-7. Lovely. The 2-8 gives me a yellow 2-8 and a green 2-8. And what I was missing is a yellow 2-8. Well, Sudoku gives me a yellow 2-8 in here. And that's 1. Which gives me 9, which gives me 1. And the 9 gives me a 5, gives me a 9. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to repeat a similar feat up here somehow. So that I can just like 
move forward with the solve a bit. The, three, the green 3, 7 is none of the cells is in here with a 5. Yeah, let's, let's just see if we can do something in here with the rotational symmetry. Then we'll come back to essentially finishing the puzzle. We're, we've made a lot of progress, not a lot of digits. It's just it kind of belies how much progress we've made. But we really have done a ton. Famous last words, huh? Green 2-8. None of these cells. None of these cells. That's the green 2-8. Now, yellow 2-8 is none of these cells. It's in here with three of them. Actually, this box was very helpful. Let's see if this box will be equally helpful. So we needed in here a 3-7 and a 2-8. And the green 2-8 is in here. No longer this cell. That's the green 2-8. And this is the 9, which gives me a 1, which gives me a 9, which gives me another 1, and it gives me a 5. Then we have a 3-7 pair plus something else. A yellow 2-8, of course. Green 2-8 gives me yellow, gives me green. And then obviously the polarities have to be the same. So I can color the three sevens. And uh, hopefully that will kind of bring me home. I'm missing a yellow two eight. And the three sevens. I can't seem to figure this out actually. We know that there's a bit of asymmetry going on here. Ooh, getting very tough now. We need a green 3-7 in here, and it's not this cell. We need a green 3-7, a 5, and a 4-6. The 4-6, yeah, it's very likely to be here. It's not this cell. In fact, row, row 8 is done, isn't it? These are two 4-6s. A pair of 4-6s, not two 4-6s. Because that's a 2-8 pair, that's a 3-7 pair, that's a 5, that's a 1-9, that's a 4-6 pair. And therefore, this is a green 3-7 and a 5, which amazingly I still cannot place. Just like, huh? We need a yellow 3-7 and a 5 again. That 5 tells me that's the 5. Come on, that's the five, that's the five. This is another three seven, that's the green three seven. This is the only place that is available for the green three seven, so I need a yellow three seven. That yellow gives me yellow three seven. Mm -hmm. And a yellow two eight. So far, the colors are working, so despite everything that I'm doing in here, I think I'm on the right track. This has to be a green 3-7. That seems to line up. Is it really going to come down to this diagonal to actually help us solve all of this? Which will probably mean that I need to color it. I need a yellow 3-7, which obviously isn't this cell. So that's a yellow 3-7. That's a yellow, not 3-8, 3-7. And this is a yellow 2-8. And it really does seem like we're going to need to do this, which is absolutely incredible. This is 4-6, just to complete. And 4-6 uh, is 4 sixes. This is a green 3-7. So that's green. And therefore, that's yellow. That's green. That's yellow. That's green. And I think... I've colored all the three sevens. Nine of them. Yeah. 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 No, I need one in here. That's a three seven. That gives me my digits. I don't need to color. And therefore, this is a four six. Fantastic. A just unbelievable puzzle. Highly deserving of the 96% rating. Highly deserving. And uh, we're, we're very lucky individuals to have such 
phenomenal puzzles. Can I just double click this? No. What if I do this? Yes. That's three. No. Come on. No. That's going to be eight. And therefore, this will be two. No, I didn't. I missed this eight. Let's try that again. They're all green. Yeah, that's looking good. Twos. So I've just got fours and sixes left. And that three gives me four and six. And given I don't have colors, I'm just going to have to do this kind of eyeball at six, four. So you don't actually need the diagonal. The diagonal tips you up to the fact that it's asymmetrical. Hang on. Maybe I'm mistaken here, by the way. Uh, maybe I do need it. I need to figure out what this cell is. Ho ho ho. And this cell, I'm I'm gonna say this is probably a double four to allow it to be low enough to be forty-four, but let's double check. Ten uh twenty twenty and twelve. That's thirty-two. So I actually need twelve. Never mind, it's a double six. <laughs> uh, ignore what I say. I think that's generally a good rule in life. And six is for the finish, so you did need the diagonal. What a phenomenal puzzle, Noon. What an absolutely phenomenal puzzle this was. Uh, shame about some of the colors, though. I think if you picked a different thermometer, this would be a lot more visible. And if I picked a better set of colors than green and yellow, that would have been probably a bit more helpful. So apologies for anyone that's struggling to see this. Hope that you guys enjoy the puzzle. Clearly, I have based on my reaction. And uh, see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.